Okay, so if you've reached this, uh, this video, it means you have an understanding of the overall aim of the course itself. You know that there are three components, component one, two, and three. Component one and two is internally assessed coursework. Component three is an exam that you have to prepare for. And we're now going to be looking at the first component, more specifically component one, learning aim A. And even within this learning aim, so the first part, out of three for the component one there's going to be a multiple uh, a number of different videos that I'm going to have breaking the separate sections down so the first section before we even start looking at the work is to understand what it is that you've been asked to do now that's really really important I can't tell you how many times students who have tried exam questions they gave amazing piece of written work but it's nothing to do with the course the, the question that's been asked which tells me one thing, that they didn't either read the question properly or they didn't simply understand what was being asked of them. So you could be wasting your time like some of these students if you don't understand the task itself, what it is that is required from you. So in this video, we're just going to look at this assignment brief. As I said in the last video, this here is basically how it's going to look when you do the real thing. Now, it could be printed off depending on what teacher you have. It could be given to you online. It could be a Word document template. It could be a Google document template. It doesn't really matter, but you'll see these tables. You may have a different title, but you'll see these here. So um, you'll see that the qualification is a BTEC level one or two, depending on how, uh, you know, which you know, tier you actually grade and mark off. You'll, it tells you exactly what component you're working on, what learning aim it is as well. So I've got it down up at the top as well as here. <coughs> Excuse me. And the assignment title here is the user interface. So if you are in my class, you know what that is. Or oh, I should hope that you know what that is. You'll have the assessor name here, which uh, in my case here is me. My name is uh, Kazia Ali. But it could be another teacher. The date that it was issued and the date your teacher will expect it uh, handed back in by. So if you're in my class, I'll put a date on the board and I'll tell you uh, both of these dates, and that's the first thing you're going to type into there when you start it. So let's look at the scenario itself. Uh, so the, the scenario, the story, I think that's the best way to see if you don't know what the word scenario is. It's the background, it's the the world, or the, the, the situation that you're going to be living in, that you're going to pretend you are in. Now I want to just stop for a second here, boys and girls, and remind you that in the real coursework, the real component, this part here will be different. It might be similar, but it won't be the same. Remember what I said in the very first uh, couple of videos? Um, the whole point of this is to prepare you for the real thing. Now, we can't give the real thing. This, these are the you know, examples that you're going to do to learn those skills and get the, the acquire that knowledge that you need that will help you when you do do the real thing. So let's read this out. So this is um, a scenario here. So you're hired. That's what I've titled it. This is what I've called it. <clears throat> now, if you are in a different school, they might have a different scenario. They might have a different title. They might have a different uh, situation altogether. And that's completely fine. So you've been hired to provide your IT skills for a local medical practice. Before you can start, you have to do some research. So from the outset, I'm telling you, you're going to do research. This is a research task. Learning game A is all about you doing research, proving that you have the knowledge and you have the understanding uh, that's required before you go ahead and make whatever product it is that this medical practice is going to be asking you. Now, just because there's a medical practice, as I said a few seconds ago, just because in this example, this practice, this mock that you're doing with me or hey, if you're following along at home, is a medical practice, does not mean that when you do the real thing, it'll be a medical practice. It might or will be something else. Okay, just bear that in mind. Let's continue reading. The first step is to investigate uh, into two different types of user, user interfaces. I'm going to ma maximize this so we can see a little bit better. There we go. Uh, you're going to investigate into two different types of user interfaces. Your research needs to include how the user interfaces are used by both individuals and, or, and organizations. You need to research how both user interfaces meet the audience's requirements, including their accessibility needs, skills levels, and demographics. These words should be very, very familiar to you. Use different design principles, allow both appropriate and effective user interactions with hardware devices, 
and allow different types of users to, eff to efficiently interact with uh, the interface and what design techniques have been used. You're going to select any two types of the user interfaces from the following list for your research. Now, personally, I'm going to focus on the two that I find the easiest, uh, which is going to be GUIs and menus slash forms. But you are allowed, if you feel confident enough and you are brave enough, or if you feel it's easier, to pick any other two. But you have to pick two from whatever list is here. The next step is to use your research to produce a multimedia uh, product or a written report to showcase your findings. So you're going to do this research, you're going to investigate into this, you're going to find out the differences between them, uh, the two that you pick from this list here. Talk about user accessibility needs and so on and so forth. You're going to compare and contrast, you're going to talk about the pros and cons, you're going to find out the strengths and weaknesses of each. And you need to put that somewhere. There's no point doing the research and then not be able to show it to the examiner, to the moderator, to your teacher. So what you need to do is either put it on a multimedia product, which is basically what I mentioned in the last video. It could be a PowerPoint presentation. Just, just remember that if you do a PowerPoint presentation, you need to have notes, which I'm going to show you in a second. Or it can be a written report, which is an option that I prefer to take. So before I go any further, I'm going to show you what I mean by notes. So if I go here and you see PowerPoint and Word right there, and as I said, you can use Google's version of Word, which is Google Docs, and Google's version of PowerPoint, which is Google Slides. If I go to PowerPoint here as an example, I just want to show you very quickly uh, what it means by having uh, the notes if you're using a PowerPoint. Now, the PowerPoint is, is great. It's a nice way of keeping yourself organized because you now have a separate section on each slide. And if you do forget something, you need to add something, you can add a slide in between without really changing the structure of the rest of the document, which is fine. But the problem with PowerPoint is that it's limited space in terms of uh, how much you can write on there. So yes, you can have screenshots or whatever, and you can put text boxes all the way around, but it does limit to how much uh, space you have. So here's a, a typical PowerPoint presentation. I'm sure this is not a surprise to any of you. And if I open a new slide, you can see you've got a new slide there. So that typically be your, uh, your front page, your title page, and then you have your main page. And of course, you've got other designs and layouts here. Um, the notes are down here. If I drag this up a little bit, you'll see it says click to add notes. If I click here, it gives you a space to type. So if you do go for the presentation route, whether it's on Google Slides or Microsoft, Microsoft PowerPoint, you must have detailed notes down here. So you'll have annotated notes in the actual slide itself, where my mouse is right now. So you may use text, box, text, box, text boxes all the way around. And then notes at the bottom as well for every single slide, talking about your findings, what you've done, what you found out, uh, your pros and cons, and everything else that's required of the spec the the, the uh, component and the learning aim. Now, bear in mind, in my videos, I'm not taking this route, but that's not to say that you can't use my videos and just project it onto this, to record it onto this. This is just a method of your ev evidence. So the videos that I am going to be sharing with you will still go through step by step the things that you need to do. It's then up to you how you do it. It shouldn't matter if you do it on a presentation document or a Word document. So I'm going to take this off. I'm not going to save it. Uh, as I said, if you're doing it with me in my class and you have me as a teacher, we're going to use the document here in front of us using Google Classroom. So let's go through this. Um, the next step is to use your research to uh, produce a multimedia product, as I said, uh, and it tells you here, the multimedia products or report must contain three parts. We need to have the user interfaces, the design principles, and alternative designs, okay? So this straight away is telling you some of the titles that you need to have in your document, whether if it's a presentation or a Word document or a report. It needs to have these. You can have more, and you'll see that I've broken it down even further to make it easier. But these are the main three that you need to have, absolutely. And after that point, it's breaking it down by task. So task one, part A, you've got the user interface. Notice how that corresponds with this. So that's A, B, C. So you can see A broken down and gone into further detail here. And then there's a, it, there's a list of how you show that as evidence. Then task B, design principle, again, shows you the evidence that you need for task B. And then you've got task, uh, sorry, part C, alternative designs. And these are the things you talk about when you talk about alternative designs. So what it's worth doing right now is rather than me dragging the video on any longer, I would suggest that you pause the video here. And if you have access to this um, because you're in my class, then of course, all you gotta do is pause the video and read this. Understand what you're gonna be doing, 
but I'm going to break these sections down one at a time. So read through this here, and I'll just give you an opportunity to, to pause it here. Okay. Um, and then you want to look through task one, part B. I'm going to just scroll down a little bit more. Ooh, too much. There we go. I'll let you pause it here now. And then go down a little bit more. And I'll let you pause it here. And I want to go back to here now. Right. This is the assessment criteria. This is what your teacher has to use to say whether you've hit this or not. D1 is a distinction. Merit, pass, pass, merit, merit, pass, and pass. You'll see a lot of these are very similar, but the language, the words that are used are slightly different. So you'll see here it says, assess how effectively two different types of user interfaces meet the design principles and using these with justified examples. So justified, assess, okay? Whereas here is explain. Here is analyze, yeah? So if you just explain it, there's no depth in what you're doing, what you've said, then you're not gonna get the merit. If you analyze it, so you talk about the pros and cons, fair enough. But then when you assess it, you really dive into it. You talk about the nitty gritty stuff, the uh, the specific details that's required for the context that you are in. Remember, we're talking about medical practice in this example. In the real thing, you have to talk about whatever scenario or business that is in. Then you're talking and you're going for the higher order thinking skills. So the, the levels are harder, therefore they're, you know, the marks are higher as well. You look see down here as well, identify. Anyone can identify. That's very, very easy. Describing is one step further. Explaining is even one more step further. So you have to go through this list. This is what you're looking for. And this is what I want everyone to be aiming for. Okay. So again, if you have a copy of this, you can read this. If you don't, I'll let you pause it here. And then I'll come back down here and let you pause it here. Now, I want to finally finish off this video talking about sources of information. Now, if you are in my class, I might add more things into this area, and this will be different for every... By the way, all this information will be different for every uh, learning aim you do. So when we do the next one, it'll be another document. It might look similar, but it's definitely not the same. The information is different, okay? So if I show you very quickly here, this is task uh, learning aim B. It says that instead of user interfaces. It says something else here as well. The information changes. The table's the same, information isn't. So we're going to end the video here. Um, as I said, you've got some resources there. Your teachers might give you something else in there. And when you do the real thing, it'll say something else in there as well. All right, we'll finish off the video here now. In the next video, we're going to look at just simply at section one.